Hi everyone. Today's message, in keeping with our Super Bible Facts series, is Super Bible Facts Part 3 of 10. Now, first let me say it was wonderful to hear from so many of you about how much you all enjoyed and were edified by Part 1 and 2 of Super Bible Facts. That was a true blessing and we praise the Lord for that. Now, before we move along to Part 3 and the next 10 Super Bible Facts, I want to point out again, once again, that it is so very important for you all to become fully aware that the messages from the first chapter of Matthew to the last chapter of Revelation, five different groups or classes of people are addressed. And let me go through them again. Number one, to unsaved Israelites who are under the law. Number two, to saved Israelites who were under the law before they became members of the body of Christ. Number three, to save Gentiles who are alien, aliens, aliens, let me keep saying that, to unsaved Gentiles who are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and not under the law. I repeat the word aliens to let you know that, uh, well, it's part of some future messages, but let that plant the seed. Number four, to carnal saints and babes who are members of the body of Christ. And the fifth group, are to those who are of full age, Called the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, of course, for an in-depth explanation of these five different groups, I urge you to watch or read on our website, Super Bible Facts, Part 1. If you keep these five different groups in mind, you will derive both blessing and benefit as you carefully study the second set of 10 Super Facts, which we're going into right now. Now, in this message, I've gone ahead and added two additional bonus Super Facts. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, number one, the law of dispensation was both parenthetical and temporary. Galatians 3.19, Hebrews 8, 7 to 13. The law, which was contrary to man, was nailed to the cross. Colossians 2.14. Number two, in the first 11 chapters of Genesis, we have the record from creation to the call of Abram, about 2100 years. Israel was Abraham's grandson. About 70 souls out of the loins of Jacob, Israel, went to Egypt about 1900 BC, and more than one million Israelites came out of Egypt about 1500 BC. It's quite the difference. Exodus 1.5 and Exodus 12.17. Now, number three, the period from the sin of Adam to the time God made the Sinai covenant with Israel is called from Adam to Moses when there is no law, Romans 5, 12 to 14. Remember also that there were no Israelites before the flood. Abel, Seth, Enoch, Noah, Shem, and Eber were not Israelites, but the Israelites were Eberites and Shemites. Matter of fact, the Jews are still called the Semitic people to this day. Okay, number four. From Genesis 12.1 to Malachi 4.6, there are 926 chapters. Now, with the probable exception of Job and some of Proverbs, they all deal with the one nation, Israel. The other nations spoke of are only those nations that have dealings with Israel. All of the 39 books from Genesis to Malachi were written by Jews. Read Romans 3.1 and Romans 9.4-6. Now, if Luke was a Jew, then the 27 books of the New Testament were also written by Jews. Super fact number five. The times of the Gentiles politically or governmentally began about 600 BC. And you can find that in Jeremiah 50 to 52. Now the times of the Gentiles spiritually began when God sent temporary blindness upon Israel and the risen Lord Jesus Christ sent the Apostle Paul to the Gentiles with the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Okay, Super Fact 6. The Spirit of Christ was in the Old Testament prophets and testified beforehand the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ and the glory that should follow, 1 Peter 1.11. In Genesis 3, 14-16, before the Old Testament existed, Christ was to be the seed of the woman. In Malachi 3, the Lord whom ye seek. In Isaiah 7, 14, 
Christ was to be the Lord and the seed of the woman. It's very fascinating stuff. Okay, Super Fact 7. All of the prophets since the world began spoke of the restitution of all things, the millennium or the coming kingdom age, Acts 3.21 and Acts 3.24. When that time arrives, the 12 apostles will be sitting on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel, Matthew 19.28. Now note the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark 1.14-15 and Matthew 4.17 why the kingdom of heaven was at hand. It's a good read. Make sure you do that. All right, Super Fact 8. The prophets foretold that Christ would be the stone rejected by the builders. Matthew 21, 42, Luke 20, 17, and Psalm 118, 22. Now David wrote that Christ would be raised from the dead to sit on David's throne. Acts 2, 27 to 32. Now, carefully note the prophecy of Amos. In Amos 9, 11 to 15, Christ here is to build again the tabernacle of David and save Israelites and Gentiles. This, this is the program of Acts 15, 13 to 18. Okay, Super Fact 9. The Old Testament prophets foretold the resurrection of Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 4, and Psalm 16, 8 to 10. They foretold the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's tribulation, Jeremiah 30, verse 7, and Luke 21, 11. They prophesied of the tree, Calvary, the tribulation, the throne, and Gentile salvation. In Abraham's seed, all nations would be blessed. Note what these scriptures foresaw when Abram was justified, Galatians 3.8. Now, super fact number 10. Don't forget, we have two bonus super facts. So, super fact number 10. The Old Testament prophets prophesied that Christ would be a king on David's throne, Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, and Psalm 24, Ezekiel 34, 23 to 24, Ezekiel 34, 28 to 31, and Ezekiel 37, 24. However, the Old Testament prophets never once prophesied that the Lord Jesus Christ would be the head of the body of Christ, Ephesians 1, 19 to 23, that believing Jews and believing Gentiles joined without distinction in the one body of Ephesians 4, 4 to 5, of which Christ is the head, was truth not known and not prophesied by Israel's prophets. Okay? If you gotta move the uh, video back and listen to that again, be sure you do, because that's an extremely important point. Okay, here's our two bonus super Bible facts. Number 11. When the Old Testament prophets foretold the salvation of Gentiles, many times it was concerning their salvation in the kingdom, in subjection to Israel, but never concerning God's eternal purpose in Christ as revealed in 2 Timothy 1, 9 to 11, or Ephesians 3, 8 to 11, the Apostle Paul preached to Gentiles many divine truths about which Israel's prophets wrote and spoke, but he also preached among them the unsearchable or unprophesied Riches of Christ, Ephesians 3.8. Now read carefully 2 Timothy 1, 9 to 11 and compare that with the Apostle Peter's message to Cornelius in Acts 10, 34 to 38, and you'll see the differences. Okay, Super Bible Fact 12. Not one of Israel's prophets knew, spoke, or wrote concerning the one new man of Ephesians 2.15, or the present dispensation of grace, the reign of grace, that is, God's eternal purpose in Christ, Ephesians 3.11, or concerning the joint body, the susoma of Ephesians 3.6 and Colossians 1.24-27. This was the mystery 
revealed to the Apostle Paul by the risen Christ. Ephesians 6, 19 to 20, and Ephesians 3, 9, and Ephesians 5, 32. In Ephesians 3, 6, the word body is, in the Greek, susoma, S-U-S-S-O-M-A, meaning joint body. Now make note, make a big note, <laughs> that when you read in the Apostle Paul's epistles of the mystery or the secret, that this truth was withheld from all servants of the Lord until it was revealed by the risen Christ to the Apostle Paul. Okay? All right, amen. Now, here's a thought to keep with you today and maybe tomorrow and for a long while. A love for religion, a love for ritualism, a love for sectarianism, which is denominationalism, your denomination, if you love your denomination, will keep a saint carnal just as much as a love of the world. So there you have it. Please spread this message to everyone you know far and wide because the time is short. Now, peace be to you and gra uh, grace and be to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye for now.